Hello everyone, welcome to the Rowling Library. My name is Patricio and today I have the great honor of being with Thomas Taylor. He's a successful author of the Eerie on Sea series, which has three books published, Malamander, Gargantis and Shadowgast. But today we are going to talk about his first job, his first work. Uh, he's the artist who illustrated the, the first cover for a Harry Potter book 20 years ago, 26 years ago, we are going into detail later, uh, because he has, Tom had, did the cover artwork for Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, uh, this artwork that you see here, this artwork that you see here in all these copies, uh, to celebrate this anniversary, Bloomsbury, the publishing house, is releasing this new edition with the original cover artwork uh, made by Thomas, which, by the way, a lot of people think this is the only time that, that the artwork was published in, in this edition, I mean, this re-release and these editions. But as you can see, he also, or his artwork was used also in the deluxe edition, which you can see here, if you need to a close up, a beautiful edition, by the way, the artwork was used as well, also in some translations, uh, as you can see here in the Scots edition, for example, notice the philosopher Stan, no Stone, and as well in the audiobooks, I have this uh, cassette audiobook set, which is really old. Uh, yes, this is the, the artwork by Thomas, and in fact, uh, in the side, you can see the full artwork, uh, the complete artwork, we will talk about that as well. So yes, uh, Thomas, we can say Thomas gave Harry his first face. Uh, so we are going to talk about that. Uh, thank you very much, Thomas, for your time. Welcome. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you so much, Patricia, for inviting me on. I'm really, really happy to, to, to meet you at last because we have communicated in the past, haven't we? Yes. So that's, that's really good. And, and it's nice to talk about Harry Potter again, for this 25-year yes. anniversary. Can't believe it's yes. 25 years. It's a lot of time, it's a lot of time. Uh, I was going to start asking you about that. Uh, 25 years, 26 years pass since you work on this because you work on 1996. Uh, yeah. So my first question is looking back at the cover now, uh, with all the experience you gained, uh, you got throughout the years, will you use something different? Uh, how do you see the cover? Uh, what, what is your feeling about the cover? Well, I have mixed feelings because on the one hand, um, I mean, as an artist, I'm quite critical about this piece of work because it was actually my first piece of work. It was the first professional job I did outside art school. So it was my, it was my beginning in, in, in illustration. And normally when you start out as an illustrator, you kind of hope that your first work will be a bit forgotten and then you'll, you'll develop and get better and get better. But of course, in this case, this first piece of work has sort of followed me my entire career. Uh, and so I look at it and I think, well, why did I paint? Why did I paint that? Why didn't I paint something more exciting? Why didn't I paint uh, Hogwarts or uh, Diego and Ali or, you know, why didn't I do that? But of course, I was actually asked to paint this scene by the editor at Bloomsbury, mm -hmm. who said, um, could, could you please paint Hogwarts at um, King's Cross Station and Harry approaching the Hogwarts Express? And um, yeah, and so I was very new and I was just starting out, so I didn't feel I could say, no, I think it should be something different. <laughs> so I was just doing what I was told, really. Um, so I had that sort of slight regret that I could, I think I could have done something more exciting. But at the same time, I've become very aware over the years that um, a lot of people have a lot of strong emotional and nostalgic attachment to this image. So. I'm very proud of that. I'm very, very happy about that. And I like to think that people saw my picture at the time when they first discovered Harry Potter, maybe as adults or maybe as children first um, finding out about, about this world. And so that's very great. So I don't like to criticize my own picture too much because mm -hmm. I know that lots of people really love that picture. So that's, mm -hmm. that's good. So that's how I feel, um, yeah, a complicated yeah. reaction. <laughs> yeah, uh, you, you say that you, I mean, Bloomsbury told you the scene that they need for the cover. You didn't propose any anything, but in your mind you had another ideas, like you say Hogwarts, Gringotts, I don't know. Yeah, so I thought, as, as I read the book for the first time, I thought there's mm -hmm. so many things here to draw. There are so many wonderful scenes. Um, but I, I didn't feel I could really go back to the publishers and say, you know, I, 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 hear, I hear what you'd like, but maybe we could try this. You know, I was very inexperienced. I was 23 years old. I was just mm -hmm. starting out and my main worry 
was I had to get this job done properly to a professional standard. Yeah. And so that's what I was trying to do. <laughs> um, but, you know, it, it, it's fine. And it's a great scene because it is a transitional scene. This is mm -hmm. the moment where Harry finally begins to enter um, the wizarding world. And so it is an important scene. Um, but sometimes I wonder why I've painted so much railway because I mean they've painted a modern train behind and everything and I wonder whether I needed to do that really but anyway it doesn't matter now. <laughs> <laughs> yes I also remember that in an interview you mentioned there was this idea of include black and white illustrations for the heading illustration in the chapters do you remember anything of that like if it was discussed if you did some sketches something about that? Yes, yeah, so very, very early on, when I when I first went into Bloomsbury and I talked mm -hmm. with Barry Cunningham about this this project, I think that yeah, there was at the, at the very beginning there was talk of also little drawings to go at the beginning of of chapter headings, um, but it never really went very far. I, I didn't do much with that, and then the next I heard they didn't want that anymore. I think they decided it was just I don't know, it was just not right for the book or something. Um, but there was a moment when that was discussed and it would have been fun to do those. Um, but again, I, I, you know, I would probably do a much better job now than I would have done back then. So <laughs> maybe they wouldn't have been very good. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, I'm sure that they were going to be great. I mean, this cover is so iconic and it's really loved by a lot of fans around the world. Uh, I was going to ask you, like, um, it's a lot of children uh, grew up reading this book and they are very attached to this cover, uh, as, I'm, as I am myself and a lot of friends and a lot of people I know. And this new edition, it's an opportunity for this generation to buy this new book for their children and so they can have the same experience, right? So read Harry Potter with the same cover that I read when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. uh, how do it make you feel that? Uh, like the, that the readership is so attached to your cover and the experience of that book? Yeah, it's very, it's very touching and it's, it's very, um, because when I, ha I haven't really talked about Harry Potter very much in my career, I've sort of played it down, tried to avoid it, I haven't really made too much of it. Um, but I'm realizing more and more as I meet people and they talk about it that um, it's, that image is an important part of many people's childhoods. Mm -hmm. um, or as adults, they came to the books as adults and they enjoyed the books and that picture was on the front. And it's it's great, you know. I, I'm really happy about that, and um, the thought that it's so well known, it's so sort of recognisable. And um, but it's true when I go into schools because I go into schools to visit children about my my own fiction series, and occasionally mm -hmm. somebody will ask me about about Harry Potter, and it's usually a member of staff, it's the teacher or the teaching assistant or librarian who asks about the cover. Because mm -hmm. children don't necessarily recognise that cover because it's from the past. It's from yeah. 25 years 25 ago. Years old. And so to see it come back now is, is again quite touching because as you say, they will now see this image and be able to sort of borrow a little bit of the experience maybe their parents had when they first yeah. when they first yeah. encountered it. Yeah, I think that's that's the idea, right? Uh, we remember as a children carrying the book, the book with us, uh, maybe like not in the perfect condition because we read it in a lot of places as a child. Yeah. As a child, so I, I think this is a great opportunity to to share that with with the new with the new generation of, of readers of Harry Potter. Um, going back to the process and how you start working on this, you read the book in one year prior to its publication, right? So did you read a uh, Rowling's manuscript? It was because it was not the final version, it was not even a proof copy. You read the original manuscript. Well, I, I was given a printout. So this was, um, I don't know what format uh, Rowling wrote the book in, maybe mm -hmm. a Word document, but I was given a printout. So it was a stack of paper, it was big. It was only printed on one side. Uh, chapter 11 wasn't there because the author was changing something so it was missing okay. chapter 11 okay and it had a few notes and things in it as well so it was a very very early printout it wasn't a book and so i read i read that on the train started reading it on the train going home from meeting barry cunningham in london in bloomsbury uh, and the funny thing is that i i was discovering this world for the first time a year before anybody else would, would get to read it mm -hmm. but my my railway station to go home at that time from London was King's Cross Station. And my platform that I had to catch the train from was platform nine. So in wow. fact, I was traveling from right next to this magical portal mm -hmm. because I didn't know about that until I started reading the book. Uh, it's you, so it it's you in the cover. It's you in the cover <laughs> yeah. with reading the book. My glasses on, yeah. 
<laughs> so um, yeah, it felt very immediate because I sort of recognised that railway station and everything. And um, mm -hmm. um, that, yeah, that's great. That's right. I mean, you even, I, I suppose, because this goes through a lot of changes, you even read a different version of the book that I think everyone else read. So you probably know things that maybe were were left out of the book, some secrets, some stuff like that, that, well, I mean, we fans, uh, we, we will kill to know, and you had the privilege to not only read the book one year before, but reading like a, a very pure version of the book. Yeah, so it was it was not a complete version. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, it must have been quite close. But you know, I had that printout, which would now be you know very very interesting. But of course, do yeah. you do you know what I did with it? I I, have I, I, I can imagine. I can imagine <laughs> because I didn't realise it was worth keeping. It was quite mm -hmm. big, and so I was an illustrator. So I it was printed on one side. So the other side was blank. So I used it as blank paper to, to, to draw on for mm -hmm. a, quite a long time, for a few months. And then I think I put the rest of it in the recycling bin. So I, I didn't keep it. But of course, makes now sense. I really regret that I didn't yeah. have it. Quite some makes, uh, sense. makes sense. That, that version did not have Rowling's uh, illustrations, right? Because the first manuscript no. had, okay. Okay. Yeah, no, it was it was a pure printout. So even the font was just um, the font that it was written in. So I'm not sure okay. what that font was, but it had no it had a title page it was just a sheet of paper with with the title i mean it was i think okay. it was typed in a kind of fake typewriter font you know um yeah that kind of thing um M and again, it had chap chapter 11 was missing and i remember when i read it i got to chapter 11 and i thought well i want to know what's going to happen in chapter 11 and i had to wait till the book came out to actually read that chapter no. so, okay so you you read it after it was published you read it again. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I read ah, okay, it again, yeah. and I've read it. I've read it. I have read it twice. I think so. I have read it again. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, my my next question was: You never saw Rowling's illustrations, so you didn't get any inspiration or details from them. No, I I didn't know about them actually until not that long ago, and I saw some pictures of them, and I thought they were quite charming, and I wondered why they hadn't hadn't been used because I mean you know when she became so famous, you think mm -hmm. well there there's it's like a kind of wonderful thing to have drawings like that. Why haven't they yeah. used those in the book? Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I was quite surprised to see them, and I, but I, I didn't know about them when I did that artwork. Okay, yeah, okay, makes sense. Yes, it seems like it was like in, in originally not planned to include her illustrations, but maybe I don't know. They may might be part of the manuscript, and you got access to them. But yeah, I agree with you. It, it's a, like a missed opportunity to not do like a proper edition with all her illustrations. It will be wonderful. Maybe for an next anniversary, maybe yeah. for the but 50 they years. Are, they anniversary. are. They, yes, are, they, they, are, are they are in this one. They are in this one. Yes, there, yes, are yes, yes. There. there are a couple. A couple of them in this one, but like we fans know, they are like almost 30 illustrations out there. So we, we were expecting like a full book with all of them. But yes, yes, for people who don't, don't get the book yet, but they should, there are some illustrations by, by Shaker Rowling. So uh, I want to ask you, uh, when I when I show the audio book, the full illustration, hmm. uh, you work on it. I have like a bootleg edition of the book, I will show it to oh. you, which has the original plan cover Ah, okay. Yeah. So you recognize this? Yes. Yes. So when, okay. when I when I first sorry, ask a question, perhaps, and then I'll. Um, uh, no, I mean, feel free to talk about this. Okay. So, <laughs> so when I that, that that painting, this this painting that is seen here, this is just yeah. a detail from the painting. Exactly. It was originally meant to come all to the edge. Yeah, um, I will show it again for for the, the people. So yes, I, like, I will like keep this. it like this. Yes. Yeah, and so when. Um, when they were preparing after I sent the illustration in, they did send me a, um, a color um, proof of the cover. So a mm -hmm. card which shows that cover, that cover you have there. And so that's what I thought was going to be published. That's, I, I imagine that was the finished thing. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was quite surprised when this was the book that turned up. I hadn't seen that at all. It was only okay. when the book actually came out that I, oh, that's, that's my picture in this, in this border. <laughs> Um, yeah. So yeah, I thought it was going to come out like you've just shown. That was going to be the the uh, other book. So it's okay. So, edition. Yeah. So so you didn't know when you work on the illustration that is what going to be crop. You no, work on no. it as a full illustration. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean th this this is like a bootleg copy, fan made of, of of how the book was supposed to originally look. Yeah. And yeah, I mean it's it's a I mean the illustration is already beautiful in in the detail. 
but seeing the the whole cover it's it's I, I, for me it's more magical right because you have the steam coming out from the train where the title is so it's mm. it's great uh, i was curious about if you planned that or if it was or if you already knew that it was going to be crop and you just say i'm working full illustration and then they will they're going yeah, to so I mean, it's, yeah it's quite normal for i mean there is a, a, a designer who works on a book cover and the mm -hmm. designer has an input and they're often not thought about or mentioned but of course they you know they somebody probably saw that um, early edition and thought well it just needs a little something it needs something more and so the designer designed that that graphic border mm -hmm. um, and it's very striking the finished cover is very striking it's punchier than the original um yeah that early, yeah, that yeah. Early the font the font of the title is it's like very strong as you say and it's yeah like in, in that early one the green the green text for the title is an odd an odd choice so you know it makes mm -hmm. sense yeah 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 and it, it became iconic so it was a good decision uh, yeah. i want to uh, i want to ask you i know you say you don't have a, a first edition you missed that chance uh and a lot a, a, in a lot of interviews you are asked about how do you feel about that so i i i can imagine the feeling but i don't want to ask you about the missed opportunity of owning one but how do you feel that i mean we see harry potter breaking records right in actions and the book is next to classics like great gatsby or 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 these books that we know are historical books and this edition with your cover is in these action houses so there is i don't know christie's whatever and it's your artwork like it's being recognized but your artwork that first edition how makes you feel because you are not only making history in literature or, or books but also in collect inside in the action history how, how makes you feel that yeah i mean it's taken me a long time to really stop and think about that and try to understand um about that but yes it is quite striking when i see an, an auction catalog somebody will give me an auction catalog mm -hmm. and then there's a first edition charles dickens and yeah. then you know something else <laughs> Beatrix potter or something and then there's my then there's my picture <laughs> yeah so it's, it's exciting and and strange and um yeah, it makes me very happy and I am very proud of it, but I think it took me a long time to become proud of it. I was quite, um, quite negative, I think, about my connection for a time. And so I didn't talk about it a lot and I kept it under wraps. But it's only now, I think, with lots of time going by that I, I really appreciate it and I enjoy the, enjoy the connection and it's a positive thing again. And um, uh, but yes. it, is, it, is, it is fun to see it appear in, in places like that. It's, it's great. Yeah. I can imagine. Uh, as you say, I understand this mixed feeling, but your cover is iconic, not only in England or the countries where it was published, because thanks to internet, like fans from around the world, when they look on Google or whatever for Harry Potter books, your cover is the first one that appears. So for me, Harry Potter it is, is not- strange though. It's Sorry. strange, completely strange. Like a random kid from Argentina, as myself, when things about Harry Potter, things about your illustration, and not Daniel Radcliffe, the actor. So, okay. <laughs> so it's it's. Yeah. I think it's weird, but I think it happens to a lot of people. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, and I can I, I ask you this because I, I I like to know how do you feel about this because it's a really strange feeling, sensation. I, I suppose. It, it it is. I mean, it, it is. It was. It's what's strange about it is it's all so unplanned because of course mm -hmm. I was very new so. Um, you know, why did I get that job? You know, I, I got that job because I, I recognised that Bloomsbury were publishing a lot of new children's books. They were starting children's books for the first time, and they were publishing a lot very quickly. Yeah. And so I, I said, well, I can see if I go there, I can probably find an opportunity. And I had already drawn lots of, sort of dragons and things like that. So I had my my folder was full of things like that. So it's not completely random. You know, I chose to go to see them. I chose to show them these pictures, and they happened to have a, a magical book, and they thought, <laughs> well. No one's heard of this author. No one's heard of this illustrator. It's a completely yeah. new book. You know, fine. He, he he can have that job. So, it, but it's a strange series of events that came together for yeah. it to happen, and then for yeah. for you in Argentina to you know to find the books and and love, the, and love that cover too, because that's not the cover that would have been on your book in Argentina. No, it? no, of course, no. We have a different illustrator, and different countries have different translators and etc. But thanks to internet as well and this globalization of the phenomenon. It's like we know this is the Harry Potter cover in English, the original one, and probably the one that we memorize and we think of when we think of Harry Potter books. Um, I want to ask you as well this question that 
you are now in the other side as an author of books, right? You publish, as we said, uh, you publish several novels, like I remember Hunters many years ago. Oh, yes, uh, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, I yeah. really, <laughs> you, you did. Now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And now, as we said, this uh, Arian C series, which has three books, uh, Malamander, Gargantis, and Shadow Ghost. Uh, how do you feel being in the other side? that an illustrator comes with, like, this is the cover I did based on your work. Uh, how, how does it feel? If you want to show the books, uh, feel free. Yeah. So it is an odd thing because this is this is Malamander, the first yeah. in the series. There will be five <laughs> books in total, so three have come out already. Yeah. But the, the odd thing is that I, I wrote this book as an author, but I didn't do the cover art. So exactly. it, it's true, I've come completely full circle because there I am right, drawing a picture for J.K. Mm -hmm. Rowling's novel and now here I am I'm, I've written a book someone else has done the drawing and people say well why, why haven't you done but of course I, I haven't worked on uh, book covers for years mm -hmm. I, I mean I'm completely out of practice um, mm -hmm. and also I have been making a conscious effort to to, to, to move fully to writing and, and have succeeded to do that and I do see mm -hmm. myself now as a writer primarily but mm -hmm. I still do do drawing so for example in, in the area on sea books there yeah. are actually drawn chapter heading illustrations of, of a kind that maybe they would have been in Harry Potter in the Harry Potter, world. Yeah. So it's an odd, it is an odd sort of circular thing. Um, uh, but yeah, so I'm really, really um, enjoying writing this series. And um, it's a similar kind of, because it's a, it's a magical story series mm -hmm. with a similar sort of middle grey vibe to it. So um, it feels right yeah. for me. The, well, you asked me, um, how I felt about waiting for um, someone else to draw the picture. And it was a bit strange because of course I, I had initially thought, well, I might do the cover art for my own books. Um, but it became clear that it was a, quite a big thing for me to sort of go back to while I was also writing the books. And the publisher Walker, they had a, a great artist on, on, on hand who was really good. And he, he produced this brilliant cover art and he is great with color. So for example, to have a, a lemon yellow sky like that is, it's not something I would have thought of. So he was he was so good that it was OK. You know, I was happy to have somebody good take that on. Um, of course, I might have felt differently if it hadn't been very good. I might have been a bit upset. But um, no, but it was a relief because actually his style fits yeah. very well with, with the writing. Mm -hmm. so, so it was OK. But um, so so that's a full circle. You uh, you learn how to behave as an author waiting for for the illustrator to to put in, in a cover what you created. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. at some point back in the past, J.K. Rowling would have been shown at some point the image that I produced and, you know, hopefully she liked it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. but, and had I'm that, sure that she did. Experience. <laughs> I'm sure she did. So to end, I want to share with you a fun fact. I don't know if you are aware. I think you, you are going to like it. So uh, you kind I, I will kind, I will spoil it first, but I don't know if you know that you kind of inspire some scenes in the Harry Potter films. I, I'm going to explain um, how or, or why. It's not completely or 100% correct, but we can play it is. So in the Harry Potter books, there is no mention at all that Dumbledore ties, sorry, his bear. So this was your idea you added to the illustration and there is no mention in the book at all, in none of the seven books. Uh -huh. But okay, I didn't there. think about that. Okay. No, I'm sure you <laughs> oh, did. <okay. laughs> but Wonderful. this was used in some Harry Potter films. So the actor okay. in the Harry Potter films, Michael Gambon, ties his bird as well, uh, probably uh, by a director's oh, uh, instruction, okay. etc. So brilliant. yeah, uh, so this is a, a fun fact that you your illustration for the back cover inspired the Harry Potter films, we can say it. Uh, okay. So this is another trivia you can share next time oh, someone asks you. Yes, that's brilliant. Thank you for telling me that. I, <laughs> <laughs> I want to bring some fun fact for you as well to the interview. So thank you. So that's thank brilliant. you. Thank you. I, I am glad you didn't know. Maybe someone told you and I was expecting to. No, be I've never heard you. that. I've never heard that. In fact, I'm thinking now I should grow my beard a bit longer so I could do the same. <laughs> Uh, so people will ask you and you can say, no, this was because the movie and, and etc. cetera. It's a dumb so, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So thank you very much, Thomas. I really appreciate your time. It has been uh, a really pleasure talking to you, learning from your experience and, and what you did for the Harry Potter world and fans around the world. Um, it's, it's been great. That's great. Thank you so much for inviting me on, Patricio. It's been really good to talk. And um, yeah, probably catch up with you on Twitter or something. 
Yeah, sure. So everyone, thanks for watching. Remember, you can follow Thomas on Twitter and Instagram. I will share the social handles uh, below. You can copy them and give them a try to the Erion C series as well. Three books published so far of a total of five. And as well, check the new edition of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, 25th anniversary of the first book. Uh, published uh, many years ago, includes illustration by Sheikha Rowling, an essay by Thomas as well, uh, talking about the experience. And yeah, that's all. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Bye bye.